Welcome to Martini Time, uh, my favorite time of the day, and I don't know whether it's because I get to talk to you or have the martini, or both. <laughs> I do know that uh, I have a lot of writing energy in the morning. I, I uh, meditate in the morning for an hour, hour and a half, or something, and I come down, get a cup of coffee, and I, and I start writing, and then I have energy for my 8 o'clock talk, and, and I usually write and on Facebook, uh, whatever, most of the morning. And uh, then in the afternoon I take a nap and we watch uh, British Mystery and then I have a martini and I've got writing energy again. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so I know it's not, the writing is not all the martini because I don't have one in the morning. So the title I just wrote on here because when you do Facebook Live you have to write a title in and I don't know what it's going to be until I just write it in and so this one is The Art of Letting Go and we just watched uh, a British mystery series called Wallander it's on Netflix and um, it's very different because uh, not only does it have a Shakespearean actor Kenneth Branagh Brano, something but it's filmed in Sweden but the actors are British. So when you look at writing and everything, it's in Swedish. It's very unusual. Uh, you don't hear any Swedish talking, uh, but it's filmed in Sweden, so everything is written in Sweden. And when they're looking at writing on the computer or anything, it's Swedish. But the, but the actors are British. Very different. And um, it ran for about three years. It's over now. <laughs> And it and I'll tell you how it ends, uh, because it's not that big a deal. But it ends with the uh, detector inspector, uh, Kurt Wallander, uh, getting Alzheimer's, like his father. So he had to let go. And um, and there was a lot of you know when he found out he had it, it you know there was a lot of struggle and anger and fighting it, and then there was a surrender at the end and uh, and I just felt you know and, and of course <laughs> I, we look we you, this is the problem when you find a great series like this and you fall in love with the character and then it ends you have to let it go but we can imagine oh that Wallen that Kurt Wallenter is having a good life even after his show ended as if he were uh, a real person <laughs> because when a when an actor really develops a character that is a living character you think they have a life outside of the show. You know, you, you feel that they're really there. And you wonder how they're doing. <laughs> you know? And uh, anyway, so I had, we had to let go of Wallander. And, uh, and so I got to thinking about the art of letting go. And how basically the art of letting go is a spiritual practice. Just like any art is a practice. If you're going to do painting or writing or whatever, there's an art to it. So there's a practice to it. You practice it. You do it. And you do it without any uh, means, with, without separating the means from the end. In other words, you don't do art. Uh, I'm going to make a lot of money off of this. Oh boy, what can I do? Make money off of this. You know how I make money off this? Let's make some money. You know, well, that's not art. <laughs> So the, the creativity of the art uh, happens through the process of letting go. And this is my practice now. Uh, you know, since I'm retired, I don't have to, uh, I'm fortunate that I don't have to uh, go do the nine to five or something. Uh, so I get to practice uh, my art in my everyday life. And even doing this Facebook Live is the art of letting go. So I just turn the camera on and let go. And when I write on Facebook, I just look at the blank space and I let go. Then my fingers know what to do and my mouth knows what to do here. And I just let go. So this whole idea of letting go is really letting go of your past, uh, letting go of your, your position, uh, letting go of your uh, future, uh, letting go of your control letting go of your power. It all has to go. And so Alzheimer's is kind of like a metaphor for that, and perhaps this is why we fear it, 
uh, why we why it is a um, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get into the actual facts of it, but but metaphorically, it is a letting go of your memory and your position in life, your history, the whole thing. So it, it's uh, which is what death is all about. Letting go is death, you see. And life is letting go. I mean, life is constantly letting go of itself, and that's what creativity is. Creativity is letting go of itself. It letting go of anything you're holding on to, any fear, any means, any gaining idea, anything, letting go and letting your life happen, which is creativity. So the art of letting go is letting your life happen. So it's an acceptance of what's happening, you see. And this really takes, this really takes a, an art, a, a practice, an intention, because the natural instinct is to cling and hold. Uh, and the whole force of our economy and our culture is to hold and don't do anything unless it has a purpose, a gaining idea. What are you going to get out of it? You see, you know, there has to be some gain, but the creative act is not done for a gaining idea, nor is love. Love is not a gaining idea. Love is letting go. So love and creativity are both letting go. And life is letting go. So love, life, and creativity are all different ways of looking at the same thing. So love, life, creativity, and death are all letting go. So life and death, creativity, spontaneity is all the same thing. Letting go. Ah, relaxing. Ah, opening the hand. Opening the hand. Opening. Ah, oh, letting go, you see. And, and uh, we find all kinds of ways in our society to uh, let go, uh, but it's always temporary. Just going to a movie is letting go of your world movie. We all live in a movie with the main character being me, and so we go watch another movie and we can let go of our movie for a couple of hours, and we feel relieved. And we even like to go to sleep because we let go of our movie in our character for the evening and then we go to deep sleep and we let go of the dream movie and we have oh I really slept so good you see <laughs> I went down and touched my source I went down and renewed my battery I went down and renewed my life energy and then I come back up through the dream and into the world movie and I have energy you see so this whole idea of having good sleep and having energy is very important because uh, we renew the life energy by letting go of the movie, the day movie and the dream movie, you see. It takes energy to run that projector. It takes energy to run this personality with its memory and its hopes and all the dreams and, all, and the pains and the grievances and all the problems. It takes a lot of energy. It's a circuit. It's like an electronic circuit that's all filled up. All the energy is used up just maintaining it. When we get stressed out and exhausted, it's because we have maxed out our energy. The, the circuit has gotten overloaded and we don't have enough energy to run it, so we're always wiped out. That's a good sign. We need to let go. <laughs> you see. So, there's so much uh, interconnected here, and I guess the important thing I'm looking at here is the art uh, of letting go. And it really is a spiritual practice, and meditation is the art of letting go. What is meditation? But the intention to sit down and let go of the minds telling you this is the stupidest thing you ever did. <laughs> you got more important things to do. You, can, you don't need to do this today. Nobody will know. Let go of the meditation. You got stuff to do. Or the mind, you sit to meditate and the mind starts running in, in, in uh, faster. You say, well, this is no good. So you let go of that. And you go back to the, uh, what we haven't let go of, you see. But anyway, meditation is an art, is the art of letting go, basically. Um, and just like uh, anything we do, you know, quilt, quilting, uh, any kind of craft, 
is a, is a letting go. Uh, we're letting go of the work we're reading, doing crosswords. Uh, we let go of our movie, we let go of our program, we let go of our character, and we just do the craft, we just do the quilting, the knitting, the gardening, working on the car, hunting, playing with the dog, playing with the kids. It's all the art of, it's all ways we have of letting go. Of what? Of our character, of our series, of our Wallander, you see. We're such good actors. We are such good actors that we forget we're acting. This is what was so great about Wallander. This uh, uh, Kurt Brana was a, uh, a Shakespearean actor, great, you know. And uh, you just don't often you get that quality in a, in a mystery, you see. So it was more than a mystery. It was, uh, so you really, uh, he acted it so well that you, as I was saying, you think he's a living person. And so we're all great actors. We all act our character and our personality with such skill that we forget we're doing it. And we can't let go of it, you see. And so when we can't let go of our character, we, mm, we clutch, we grasp, we grasp, we cling, you see. Because life is letting go, remember? Life is letting go. So there's always this gap between life and our character, you see. So the character in its story, based on our memory, our grievances, our storehouse of, of uh, dreams and stuff, you see, all that baggage, all that big, big movie, you see, is, is running by a little projector called the brain. And the mind is the screen. And the brain runs this projector movie of me and the mind. Uh, and I believe I live in it, you know. And so the world is kind of like a hologram a 3D movie that's projected out there and I'm in it as a character. And of course in my world everything references to me and the character. Just like when you watch Wallander or any movie, any detective story, uh, the reference is always to the main character. Nothing happens in there that is not referenced to the main character and the, and the integrated plot of the movie. Nothing is random in there. If you see anything in a movie, or particularly detective, uh, if the camera rests on some vase or something, or if the camera is spanning a room and, and it sees that, you can be sure that's a clue. That's interrelated to something. It did, didn't randomly, you know, there's, there's something, if it holds on it and stays on it, you see, it's kind of like, be, you know, be aware of that, that's interrelated. Uh, you may not know what it means now, but it'll. But you'll see the meaning later. You see. So our whole world is in a real, the world that we live in. The world that each of us creates is a interrelated, interconnected movie, and there are clues in it. What are the clues? The clues tell you that you're asleep. <laughs> The clues tell you that you're, that you're believing your dream. The clues are all around. But we don't see it because everything is referenced to my character. So everything supports my character, my me, and keeps it alive. And in time, it's got a future. But see, when Alzheimer's comes, there's no future. When meditation comes, there's no future. When the spiritual journey takes us, there's, you let go of future. So in, in a way, in an odd way, the spiritual journey of letting go is induced Alzheimer's. You, it's not that you forget your past, it's just that you're not attached to it. I'm not attached to my past. I have a past, I have a memory. But I don't think about it unless I need it to tell you, use it as an example. So the only, the, only, the only reason I have a memory, the only purpose of my memory, my past, is to use it as examples to finding the clues to waking up, you see. So we're all, we, there's two things going on in our personal movie. We are a character playing a part so good that we forget we're playing it. So we play it day and night, 24-7. 
We're playing it all the time and we get kind of tired of it. But we don't know anything else, you see. Uh, to give it up would be death, you see. So we can't give it up. We cling to it and it's wearing us out. We start out in life fresh with it. We build it, but then it gets kind of boring. It's kind of, huh. you know, it's kind of like a character in the Wall, Wall, uh, Wallander. He said, you know, no matter when you get older, no matter how you try, you're still the same person you always were. <laughs> And Wallander's father was an artist. And he kept painting the same landscape. He was a painter. And he said, I have other ideas and I may want to paint something different, but always the brush always ends up painting this landscape. You see? So, you know, so these, uh, the movies that we watch have wisdom clues in it. And the movie that we create with our character is full of wisdom clues, but we don't notice it unless unless we have the intention to wake up. If the intention to wake up kicks like a fetus in the womb, boom, something is alive. Something wants to be born. Something is awake. What is it? I don't know. But I got to find out. I got to follow the clues. So then you begin to notice the clues that you're in a sitcom series called You. <laughs> and even though every day is different, the plot's the same. The theme is the same. You maybe feel like a victim. And then you get some, win the lottery, whatever, and the next thing you know, the plot comes back and you feel like a victim again. Or you got a bad relationship and you blame everything on the relationship and so you get rid of the relationship. You get another relationship. But the plot comes back, and now you feel the same way you did in the other relationship. You haven't escaped yourself, you see. So our self is like a sitcom series that has a different set of circumstances, each show, but it's the same plot line. It's the same system or interrelationship, the way characters relate to each other. And we recognize, that's why we love the sitcoms, is because the message is the medium. The medium, the way the characters are structured and relate to each other, is the message. Like people that write uh, uh, Harlequin Mysteries. They know the pattern. And all, all they have to do is just sit down and pump in new content. Maybe this one will be in Sweden. And I'll have a different name for my character and he'll look different. But the relationship of the characters and the plot is the same. See, the pattern is the same. You just change the content. You just, your fingers just go and you crank these things out like sausage. Because <laughs> you just know the pattern, you see. It's like an assembly line. You know the pattern. The machines are all set up. You just paint the products differently. So they look different, but it's the same shape, you see. The machines are all set up. Clank, 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 clank. You got, a, you got a, a, a cookie cutter, you know. You just change the flavor of the cookie, but the cookie's the same. Crank, 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 you see. So we kind of like live in a cookie cutter existence until the kick of awakening happens in our gut. And we want, wait a minute, something's alive. What is it? What shall it be? I have to find out, you see. And then we begin curious about the clues. There was a uh, movie called uh, Inception that I love, and movies are uh, movies are great wisdom teachers. They're metaphors. Joseph Campbell said, "Modern man is in free fall because we've wiped out all the old myths. We've wiped out the memory of humanity, the myths and myths and mythologies." of humanity, we've wiped out with rationality. Rationality has wiped it clean. It's all just fancy. We are science now, you see. No mythologies. But you have to have mythology. You have to have a story of you. You have to have a story. So movies are our mythology now. And some of them are really great. Mad Men. That's the mythology of uh, the modern man. Inception. I wanted to speak about Inception. Leonardo DiCaprio was on a team 
that had the, the means to go into the dream of another person. And they go down, down, down through the layers of the dream and put a message in the bottom of the dream. And then they had to get out. And when the person woke up, they would do that command, you see. When they went into the other dream, though, they had to be careful that they didn't believe the dream. So they had to take a totem with them, you see. They had to take a, uh, uh, each one would have a secret totem. And if they saw that totem, they would remember they were in a dream. So my totem is this little mandala. It was designed by Swami Satchidananda. So whenever I put my hand in my pocket and I feel it, I remember, oh, this is a dream. <laughs> you see? You remember. So when things get bad, you remember, oh, this is a dream. What is, what's real here? You remember. When you remember, you pause. And you look, what's real? What's real here? What's the truth here? I'm all upset. I'm all up. Wow, 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 wow. Wait a minute. What's the truth here? Is this just my movie going on? Am I just sitting in a theater getting all... I'm sitting in a theater, or you're sitting in your living room, and the movie comes on, and you're feeling all anxious and terrified. Oh, no, oh, oh. Wait a minute. What's the truth here? I'm sitting in my living room. There's no tiger here. There's no one trying to shoot me here. What's the truth here? But I believe the movie. I suspend disbelief and I go in the movie. Oh, they're going to shoot me. Oh, <laughs> What's the truth here? So you get into a big fight with the boss. Oh, he's going to fire me. <laughs> Wait, what's the truth here? Reach, your coat, reach in your pocket. Pull out your totem. Get your totem. Put it in your pocket. Reach down and feel it. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is a dream. It doesn't mean that you're not real. It just means that you're mistaking reality for a dream. So you see through the dream and you remember your disbelief. You see, we go into a movie, we suspend disbelief. We suspend, we suspend the belief that the movie's a movie. So we go into the movie and we pretend it's real. That way, you get to experience the movie and enjoy it. If you sit there and say, oh, this is fake. <laughs> this is fake. Oh, that's fake. You don't enjoy the movie. You see? You have to let go to enjoy the movie. You can let go, go into the movie and cry. Oh, my God. Tears running down your face, you see. And then you come out and say, oh, that was such a great movie. <laughs> I forgot my acting. And, and, and believe that the movie was acting real, you see. you see. So I let go of my play that I believe is real and believe the play was real, you see, for a moment. But yet there is a... When you go watch a movie, there is something that knows it's not real. When you go watch a play, there's something that remembers it's not real. But when we go to our waking play, our waking movie... We forgot. We think it's real. But it's the same thing, you see. So the spiritual journey, the waking up, is remembering that it's all a beautiful play. God's playing us. God dwells within us as us. God's playing this. It's all God's play. You see. So when we remember that it's a play, we can jump in and uh, fight with the boss. We can jump in and play at life with everything we've got. But at the same time, we know it's just a play. We know we're just acting. We know that it's not really real. It's just a play. And that way, we're free from the fear of death. Because when we believe the play is real, the play will end, and that will be death, you see. So when you remember that it's a play, but still play with all your heart, then you can play and enjoy the play without the fear of death, because you're not the play. So when the play ends, you're still there. Don't know how, but you weren't the play. So. 
thanks for joining in and I'll see you in the morning.